And this amendment raises minimum wage flat out to eight twenty-five an hour. It raises it a dollar to help those that uh, we call the working poor in our state have a little extra money in their pocket to spend within our communities. Also, this amendment addresses another huge issue that we have in our state. And uh, unfortunately, Indiana is mentioned in 10 worst states on this topic. Did you know that women in our state earn 73 cents on every dollar that a man does in Indiana? The only thing we want to do is to let the public make a decision on whether or not you think we should raise the minimum wage. Once it comes back, whether they say yay or nay, it's not binding again. So I would urge your support. This would take them from $288 a week to $328 a week. I urge your support. Once in a while, when an issue is this important, I think we need to step up to the plate and ask our federal officials to step in and help the people who need it the most. We send far more dollars to the federal government than we get back. Why can't we say we are supporting the people in our district, our neighbors, our family members, the people that we go to church with, the people who have kids to go to school with our kids, why can't we say they are still hurting? Businesses can deposit $100,000 annually in an interest-bearing account to be used to reinvest back into the business in with employees or expanding. After five years, the account is taxed at the full rate. It's designed to encourage reinvestment in employees and the business. There's also a tax credit of $2,000 for hiring someone that is unemployed. When you read this name to them, they think that that is just a cool thing, that's something we really ought to be focusing on, a lot of potential innovation, ways to move the state in a new direction. But if you tell them what really happened is that they hired a bunch of very high-priced bureaucrats to duplicate the work already being done by the state superintendent the Department of Education, guess what? They really aren't very crazy about it. As a matter of fact, it makes them quite upset. We still have about 250,000 Hoosiers who are out of work and unemployed. A promise was made that workers would not lose wages and income, but today, two years later, household income has declined from 47,399 to 46,974. Workers' wages and income has declined as companies are not required to negotiate increases in wages and benefits for the workers. The workers are being hurt, but the people who are really being hurt are the people who depend upon the wages of the workers to survive. The intent of this amendment is to assist smaller communities in meeting their basic public needs. The safety is the most important. The people of small towns such as Speedway are just as value as, valuable as the residents in Indianapolis. 